Hey guys, it's Mo. I am pre-recording this, so I'm talking from the past. Unless time is, you know, irrelevant in a social construct. Any hoozle. I wanted to spend some time with my in-laws and not be, you know, I love hanging out with you. So I figured I would do a pre-record of Nightly Newsy News. Our first story, who'd have thunk it? Uh, Black Lives Global Network. Uh, Black Lives Matter no Global Network files a $33 million lawsuit against a group that's helping to fund college protests. You know, it's almost like karma is funny, but let's see what, you know, mansions matter, you know, what these grifty organizations, I love to see it, two grifty organizations who pretend to be, you know, a charity. See, at least I'm honest with my for-profit charity. I am honest and I say, look, this is a for-profit charity. It will generally go to Sailor Moon stuff. I mean, I I can't. I can't imagine anyone would uh, steal from Black Lives Matter. Maybe, maybe they pledged to spend the funds on something. Let's get into this. A progressive nonprofit that has been shelling out cash to anti-Israel protest groups is being sued by Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation for fraud and withholding more than 33 million in donations. Look, those mansions aren't going to buy themselves for justice. I mean, I'm sure every time, you know, a mansion is bought, another kid gets saved. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it happens. I have seen this. I understand this. That is the current talking point, I'm sure. But this is a bombshell lawsuit. Tides Foundation, which has managed hundreds of millions in donation for pro donations for progressive groups since it was founded in 1976, has, quote, refused to honor its promises and continues to commandeer Black Lives Matter Global Fo Network Foundation's donations, according to a 285-page lawsuit filed in S California Superior Court, Los Angeles County, on Monday. Hmm. That's where they're getting their, you know, uniform tents and everything else. Do you even have to fund the hunger strike, though? I mean, I guess pillows and stuff, but you at least don't have to send them food. There you go. Oh my goodness. Anywho. Instead, Tides doled out undisclosed amounts of donations to a radical BLM breakaway group run by anti-police activist Melina Abdullah, who has lost a frivolous lawsuit against BL... <laughs> BLM GNF, according to court papers, and an attorney for Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. If you're going to make an acronym, that doesn't flow at all. Lose it. Call your, spend a gajillion dollars to make a better acronym. Like, if you can make an acronym that actually spells, you know, black or something, I mean, it would be catchy. You just need to work with some words. Get a thesaurus. It'll happen. I believe in you. Tides a Los Angeles and San Francisco. Well, <laughs> that explains a whole lot. Based nonprofit acts as a fiscal sponsor, essentially a clearinghouse that context, collects donations for groups that may not have a 501c3 tax exempt status. In addition to Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and other BLM groups, it manages donations for pro-Palestinian groups and have supported uh, anti-Israel protests across the country. Oh, two mega douchey th people, two sets of mega douchey like people fighting each other. I demand a duel. <laughs> when I am president, we are setting up dueling fields. If you want to do all your crazy shenanigans, you know, he said, she said, you know, stuff now you will have only nerf guns or the little you know tennis ball things but you know i'm just saying make dueling legal again billionaire george soros and his son alex soros have funneled nearly 14 million from their open society foundations to tides which sponsors activist groups including the pro-palestinian adala justice project 
and others fueled for campus protests. Oh, dear Lord. Again, people, look, come over to my Mo. Auntie Mo's going to say something. If you want anyone to be on your side, don't be an insufferable douche. Don't bar free people from campus. Don't leave the campus looking more hideous than it did before. Pick up after yourself and calmly debate people. I could be swayed, but right now you're just being insufferable kid olds, and I don't care. You know, you have no idea. You don't worry about the kids, you know, that are passing away in the Uyghur camps in China. You don't care about Yemen. You don't care about Myanmar. You don't care about, you know, Boko Haram stealing girls from schools. So stop with your fake slacktivism. We're done. Although, some, I guess you're getting handsomely paid for the whole privilege. Quote, Tides has engaged in deceptive business practices and has operated in a quasi-banking cap capacity without appropriate regulatory oversight of licenses, uh, BLM, ABCDD lawsuit says. Tides operates with a level of autonomy and minimal regulatory scrutiny that sets stark odds with the regulatory framework imposed on, <clears throat> excuse me, on traditional financial situations. <clears throat> awesome. I think I am losing my voice, which is always great because I only just talk on, on screen. <clears throat> According to the lawsuit, Tides has more than $1.4 billion in assets and allegedly acts like a bank, only without banking regulations. Wait, you're telling me that a far-left progressive activist group is ignoring rules when they're kind of cool with anarchy? Well, that mass. But I, I did graduate before No Child Left Behind in Common Core, so maybe that's wrong of me to assume. Uh, Black Lives Matter, ABCDE, uh, the National Organization of Civil Rights Movement, found in 2017, took in tens of millions of donations after the death of George Floyd in 2020. At the time, the book the group did not have tax exempt status from the IRS and approached Tides Foundation to help it manage the flood of cash. Tides, which takes a percentage of the donations to the group or to manage the group's fund, gave verbal assurances that they would return the collected money. Oh, sweet, sweet summer children, y'all needed a contract. You needed to have it notarized. You needed to have lawyerly words in there. You, in, in theory, you needed to have like a lawyer person write one up. But yeah, handshaking, I'm sure that'll work. Good idea. Uh, mean, in the meanwhile, it ma would manage Tides, which takes a percentage of the donation to manage the group's fund, gave verbal reassurances that it would return the money collected once Black Lives Matter, ABCD, EFG, received tax-exempt status, the file claims. In the meantime, it managed the donations in a collective action fund that would be accessible to this, you know, Black Lives Matter offshoot, according to the lawsuit. Black Lives Matter ABCDF ended its relationship with Tides in 2022, and Tides has refused to hand over the cash, totaling some three. 33 million, the complaint says. Instead, Tide, which takes between 3 and 9% of donations in the process, has spent part of the funds to or sent part of the funds to other BLM groups without permission of BLMGNF, the lawsuit says. On June 9th, 2022, a Tides official said Tides had just transferred 7.4 million from the collective fund back into BLM GNF. Instead, it sent part of the cash, 4.75 million, to an unaffiliated BLM chapter in Oklahoma City, the lawsuit says. It's unclear why such a large amount would be granted to a single BLM chapter, the lawsuit says. So, you know, you can't trust, you just can't trust those, well, these guys. These guys definitely don't trust.
allegedly i don't need an arc inside okay i have no knowledge of what george soritz does In a statement to the Post Wednesday, a spokesperson for Tide's foundation called the allegations in the complaint, quote, completely false, end quote. Quote, resources in the Black Lives Matter Collective Action Fund were never intended to be granted to large, well-funded national organizations like Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. They were always intended to be granted back to local Black Lives Matter chapters, Tide's statement says. Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation's lawsuit seeks to er circumvent the intent of the donor's fund or the fund's donors and deprive gra black root, black, black, grass root Black Lives Matter chapters critical resources for its own benefit. While Tide's website mentions that it, it did, it offers grant management an attorney for Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation said in a statement to the Post that Tides was not authorized to dole out donations earmarked for itself to other offshoot groups or local chapters. Tides said it had granted $12.6 million from the support fund to groups that include BLM Grassroots and Breakaway Group uh, headed by Melina Abdullah. She tried to collect $10 million from Black Lives Matter Global Network Fund in a frivolous lawsuit, quote unquote, for her breakaway BLM grassroots. Abdullah, who is running as an independent candidate uh, and Cornell West running mate in the U.S. presidential election, lost the last lost the lawsuit last year and was ordered to pay more than $700,000 in in Black Lives Matter Global Network Fund legal fee and cost. An attorney for Black, for BLMGNF cited a June ruling by a Los Angeles Superior Court judge who dismissed BLM grassroots claims of any BLM GNF donation. This lawsuit against Ties Foundation is not about financial discrepancies, but the principle of rightful ownership and transparency that should govern partnerships and social justice funding. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's terrible to see all these activists that might not get tents and stuff like that. I mean, where are the pallets of bricks supposed to go? In a statement to the Post, BLM GNF said it, quote, never expected to become victims of unscrupulous business partners. Uh. In full church lady, maybe look in the mirror. Is it Satan? I mean, <laughs> can't imagine that the grifters will get grifted. This is terrible. Bring back order into my life. Please, please, for hilarity's sake, please, please fight each other in, in lawfare forever so I can just giggle. <sighs> Quote, there's an expectation for Black Lives Matter to challenge systems, break barriers, uphold truths, buy mansions, no matter how uncomfortable the statement said. It actually didn't say buy the mansion stuff, you know, before anyone says anything. No, that was not the quote. The statement said today that extends to nonprofit or operations as we call out the Tide Foundation and other so-called fiscal sponsors who want to exploit their their role. I am willing to take all the money for a for a flat ten percent fee. I will hold it and only give it to the people you need it to. I don't care that you're protesting. I will be asking for an itemized list of what you need. And as a mom, I'm probably going to tell you, you don't get more candy bars in the checkout, you know, because we have food at home. But there you go. So they're just going to be fighting each other in a hellacious victimhood oppression Olympic obstacle. I don't know. In better news, or perhaps scary news, Hollywood, I don't know if I want you to do this or not, but Keanu Reeves says that he and Sandra Bullock would knock it out of the park if they did Speed 3. Having been an unfortunate watcher of Speed 2, anything would be better. <laughs> but please, maybe, you know what, these two back together, he goes, you know, John Wick finds a new wife. I would be willing to deal with that spinoff at this point. 
the Speed Star stopped by 50 miles per hour podcast to discuss the 1994 action thriller alongside the fellow co-stars co Jeff Daniels and Alan Ruck. When asked about a possible threequel, the Matrix star says, I mean, you know, we'd freaking knock it out of the park. Bullock chimed in saying that she might be up for it. Quote, before I die, before I leave this planet, I do think that Keanu and I need to do something in front of a camera. Are we, you know, in wheelchairs or walkers? Maybe are we in little scooters at Disneyland? Reeves echoed her sentiment, adding that it can't be forced despite their seeming interest. It does feel like there is a siren call to it, like there's something that wasn't done. He said, I would love to work with you again before our eyes close. Three years after the release of the Jean de Bont film, Bulk starred in a sequel, but Reeves did not. Looking back over the years, the proposal star uh, noted that she regretted partaking in the second installment, installment which was broadly panned yes you're speeding on a on a cruise ship it makes no sense the guy she ends up with was a dingus i it, it was just terrible don't watch it unless you feel the need to get you know to watch something cringe hilarious the cringe is chef's kiss but if you want an actual good movie just watch speed again Uh, despite Reeves and Bullock not partnering up for Speed 2, the actors reflected positively on their time work together in the first film. We had an affection, the John Wick star said on the podcast, and the characters themselves had an affection. I think Jack and Anne's uh, is different than Sa Sandra and Keanu's, but I think we play well off each other, and I think it was just fun. I think also we kind of trusted each other, right? The Miss Congeniality star added that their connection on set helped fans root for their characters in the project. I felt very comfortable with Keanu, she said. There was nothing I couldn't try or do or say that he wouldn't have. I felt fought me for me to do or say or try. That kind of trust is very rare with actors. Anytime I threw something his way, he swatted it right back. And you know, you go, okay, there's my partner. So you know what? As much as I hate twisters for all the reasons, I'd be willing, uh, please, Hollywood, mend our souls, make this movie and make it good. Let, let Keanu and, and Sandra Bullock have Speed 3 so I don't have to see Mufasa, the prequel to Lion King, or whatever the hell Star Wars. Please, I need something in Saturn news, what, what in the Walmart rapture is going on here? Quote, I'll tell you right here, I did it. Deaf driver unalived after possible quote unquote honking incident led to a road rage shooting report said. Okay, where, first of all, where did Beavis come and Beavis and Butthead just ass? And of course it's Indiana because you know, we are working to take over the world with our, you know, insidious high fructose corn syrup. Everyone will be a Hoosier one day and then feel the distinct cringe, cringe shame of having most wild stories happen in your, in your state. Not as bad as Wisconsin or Florida, but we are getting right up there, I think. Police have arrested two people in a road rage shooting that killed a deaf man on an Indiana highway last week. Indiana State Troopers found 35-year-old Ryan Hawkins dead in a pond off northbound I-65 in Indianapolis around 1.15 p.m. Wednesday. Hawkins was driving when somebody, someone in a Ford Explorer started shooting at his Honda Elantra. Troopers say Hawkins was left in the highway, crashed or left the highway, crashed into a pond and was ejected from the car. There were bullet holes on the driver's side of the Elantra and Hawkins was shot in the neck, according to police. Hawkins family have told CW affiliate Wish TV that the road rage shooting may have been sparked by a honking incident. On Friday, tro troopers arrested Andre Brisky and Shawanda Rowland. Oh, is that a that woman? 
okay, I amend that. Um, this is Lurleen, and this is her Cletus. Apparently, that's a woman. I guess, or Shonda is a boy name? Who knows? Look, I'm gonna call you Beavis and Butthead anyway. Uh, Brisky is facing charges of murder and possession of a firearm by a prohibited person, while Roland is facing charges of assisting a criminal and obstruction with just from justice. Uh, thanks to witness and witnesses and highway cameras, cops tracked down the explorer and arrested Brisky and Roland. According to court documents obtained by local ABC affiliate WRTV, Witnesses said that Hawkins sped away and the Ford Explorer pulled right up to the driver's window and started firing. But Brisky claims it was in self-defense. He reported that Hawkins was brake checking him on the highway. I'll tell you right here, I did it, Brisky alleged. I didn't mean to. I was afraid that we were going to crash and die. You know, you might want to talk to these things called lawyers before you spill what your crime is, but... You know, this was a an incredibly diggish thing to do, so I'm okay with you not being smart. Hawkins attended Gallaudet University, a school for deaf and hard of hearing students. Gallaudet University is saddened by the untimely passing of Ryan Hawkins, a 2013 graduate. The university said in a statement, Mr. Hawkins was active and an involved student and a loyal alumna. His sister is an alumna and his brother is a current student. We mourn with his family and wish them peace and comfort. Drew Hawkins spoke glowingly of his brother. Quote, when deaf people meet deaf people, you click instantaneously because you have similar lives. But Ryan just connected with everyone. He was a beautiful soul, Drew Hawkins told Wish to be. I extend all of my all of my thoughts and I will put his family in in my prayers to lose a child I can't imagine to lose a brother to lose you know all the things that it's not just that they lose him now they also lose him every year at Christmas or every year at Thanksgiving there's that echo of sadness and pain and I wish they didn't have to go through this because Beavis and Butthead decided to be jerk faces oh I'm on a rant today I don't know all right let's see here God. in absolutely hell no this woman, the audacity, audacity is on clearance this year, I think, 2024 is. So this woman who got parole because she, you know, had reefer madness and stabulated her boyfriend and the dog is deciding to appeal her conviction. Ma'am, you walked away after unaliving a man and his dog and you get probation and you're upset about that? The entitlement, look, ma'am. Cranial rectitis is a real thing, and you might run out of air because your head's so far up your butt. I can't, I cannot with this woman, but let's see what she says. A woman who smoked a potent strain of marijuana causing her to stab a man 108 times while quote-unquote acutely psychotic appeals the conviction that led to probation and community service. Ma'am, I have no words. No, you should not fight anything. You got a slap on the wrist. You ended some family's life. Again, it's that echo. It's the current pain and then the echo pain. Because every time, you know, someone in his family has an achievement, anytime there's a gathering, anytime that, you know, you just want to say something like, oh my goodness, so-and-so would have thought this was so hilarious. Or, you know what, I can't wait to see so-and-so again. And you realize you can't. So it is a lingering echo, and ma'am, you got off easy, and what in the actual sh spadoinkle are you trying to do? A California woman who admittedly stabbed a man she briefly dated to death after a drug-induced dissociative fugue-like state is appealing her conviction that resulted in a sentence with no jail time. Bryn Sprecher, Bryn Spadoinkle. 32 was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter 
in December 2023. In January, she was sentenced to two years of probation and 100 hours of community, ser community service for unaliving Chad Omelia, 26, at his Thousands Oak condo in the Congeo Valley, roughly 40 miles northwest of Los Angeles, about 1 a.m. on Memorial Day 2018. That night, she also injured the dog and tried to take her own life, but she was interrupted by the arrival of law enforcement. During her trial, Spetcher did not contest that she unalived Amelia, who died from 108 cut and stab wounds inflicted by multiple knives. Rather, both the defense and the state agrees that she was acutely psychotic during the bout of ultraviolence and therefore lacked several levels of intent and culpability. Although prosecutors originally charged Spretcher with murder in the second degree, they asked the judge to reduce the charge to involuntary manslaughter in September 2023 after their own forensic psychologists reached similar conclusions to the defense experts. Now Spetcher has nothing to lose in terms of her liberty and she wants her record clear of the conviction entirely. Her What? Ma'am, look, I, I understand that you want this to go away. You didn't do it, but you did. And a family lost their son. And you asking them to erase it is beyond cruel. You, you aren't getting jail time. Humble yourself. Realize it happened. You know, take ownership of it. But this is, this is gross. In my opinion, again, I am a redhead who rants on the internet. So you are free to think differently or have different opinions. I encourage it. In comments to People Magazine's attorney Michael Goldstein and Robert Schwartz said they recently filed a notice of appeal in Spetcher's case because they believe the guilty verdict was wrong, while the sentence imposed by Judge Worley was appropriate. The maximum sentence the convicted woman would have received for involuntary manslaughter conviction was five years in prison. Prosecutors pushed for jail time and tried to paint Spitcher as a cold-hearted woman just looking for the next party. Ventura County Judge David Worley, however, took a measure of the woman before the nightmarish even evening into account. When meeting out the sentence, relying on the actual details of Spitcher's life, which she supplied by, loved, by her loved ones during a sentencing hearing, she was born with a hearing impairment, was an audiologist before the violence and upended her life, and made another gone forever. In the end, the judge said she had no control over her actions. The ruling, perhaps, might be a foregone conclusion since the major issue contested was whether and how long Spetcher should be behind bars, with the state arguing that her decision to smoke the devil's lettuce on the night in question suggest a certain level of responsibility. In a recent interview with the Daily Mail, Spetcher said she felt pressured to the point of coercion to smoke by Omelia. Ma'am, please don't, don't drag the family into this. Don't belittle their son. Don't do that stuff. It looks gross and it doesn't translate well. Just my opinion. Again, I'm not a PR, you know, fixer person, but it, to, you know, us normies and flyover nation, it sure looks pretty gross and self-serving. Quote, I felt intimidated by him, she told the paper. If something felt personal to him, even if it really wasn't, he'd have this short fuse. Okay. Spetcher also said Amelia repeatedly insisted that she smoke the devil's lettuce he prepared really fast and said, go, 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 while she inhaled. Quote, yes, I physically inhaled it, she went on, so we're both accountable, but there's obviously been more attention to my part. During a September 2023 pre-trial hearing, Worley said medical experts for each side returned findings so definitively and similarly in their evaluations, which entirely changed the, quote, landscape of the evidence, according to documents obtained by People magazine. The sentence was controversial among the O'Malley's family. Quote, he just gave everyone in the state of California who smokes marijuana a license to unalive someone, Sean O'Malley, the victim's father, said, according to a courtroom report by the Ventura Star. The line prosecutor who failed to make the case has used radical and age-related arguments to criticize the judge. Quote, when you smoke the devil's lettuce and you're 
your skin is pale, young, and privileged upper middle class woman who bamboozles an old white male judge and you get to walk. I don't know how to reconcile that for all the other criminals and victims in the county. Ventura County District Attorney's Office, Senior Deputy District, uh, Audrey Nasfinger, who is also white. Save us from from white liberal women. I'm just save us who who are aggressive and weird. Like I don't care if you have different ideas, but these people who want to inject all of this other stuff that makes it so we don't look at people's character. We look at all of their, you know, immutable characteristics first. It's just gross. And can we stop it? Can can we all just make a pledge right now and not a you know, Amber Heard pledge, but a real one to stop this, this nanny state, this hall monitoring weird stuff. Ugh. When the verdict was read, O'Malia's loved ones exclaimed loudly with anger. Speicher and her loved ones sobbed with relief. Sean O'Malia remembered his son fondly in comments to People magazine. Quote, my son was a good, kind human being, the grieving father said. I'm amazed how many lives he touched in his t short 26 years. To the O'Malia family, my heart goes out to you. I know you feel like you didn't get justice. And sometimes justice on this earth is just plain foobar. But m maybe there's j just, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. And then you didn't even get, you know, the justice you thought, but may time make those echoes and that painful moment when you remember your loved one isn't there. May that become a little softer. Maybe, may you remember all the good memories and those will grow and be remembered and share them with others. That's a way he can live on. Is the zombie. In funnier news, an escaped zebra captured near Seattle after gallivanting around Cascade Mountains, uh, you know, as he gallivant. I love that word, gallivanting, around Cascade Mountain and foothills for days. Because, I mean, who doesn't want a gallivanting zebra? I, I can't imagine. <laughs> Here is the escape. Here is the escape zebra. <laughs> We're gonna end on a bright note. I know this isn't a full newsy news, but I've carved out like thirty-ish minutes to, you know, talk to you guys and hang out, in a sense. Before I have to go mop the floors and make some brownies, regular brownies. Anywho, so let's continue. A zebra that had been hoofing through the foothills of western Washington for days was recaptured Friday evening, nearly a week after she escaped with three other zebras. Hey, you let the zebra squad go. This this one was just awesome. <laughs> she was better at hide-and-seek than the rest of her friends. Uh, from a trailer near Seattle, local residents and animal control officers corral corralled the zebra named Shug in the community of Riverbend, about 30 miles east of Seattle, the regional animal surface says of King County wrote on the website, quote, the zebra seemed in good condition despite her nearly week-long adventure in the woods, the agency wrote. Shug was one of four zebras that escaped as they'd been transported from Washington to Montana last Sunday. The driver had taken Interstate 90 exit for North Bend in the Cascade foothills, about 30 miles east of Seattle to secure the trailer when the animals got loose, surprising residents and drivers as they galloped into the rural neighborhood. Three of the four were captured quickly after being corralled in the pasture, but the fourth, a mare who was initially dubbed C, hopped a fence and disappeared. Shug's adventure immediately captured public attention, spawning social media memes that placed the animal everywhere from riding a ferry across, or ferry across Puget Sound to rounding the bases at T-Mobile Park, home of the Seattle Mariners. 
my memers i love you i love people that take regular stories and have the skills to make a wonderful meme it is hilarious keep doing that because we all need some fun laughs but there are more credible sightings elsewhere some area residents spotted shug on their trail cameras and that sparked some concern since the cameras also captured cougars in the area earlier friday King County officials closed off the trail access points along the Sholini Tra Valley Trail in Boxley Creek Natural Area where the zebra seemed to be frequenting. People trying to see the zebra there might have been spooking it, making it harder to recapture, they said. Feeding zones were set up to help coax the animal out for rescue. Owner Kristin Kelgen previously told the Seattle Times that she bought the zebras in Lewis County, Washington, and was bringing them to a petting zoo she runs near Anaconda in southwestern Montana. She'd been on the road for about two hours when she noticed one of the trailer floor mats was flapping and dragging behind her. When she opened a door to adjust the mat, the zebras ran out. Several people stopped to help corral the animals, including a rodeo clown and horse trainers. She, wait, wait a minute. Why wasn't this caught on camera? I need to see a rodeo clown, a real wrangler, and, you know, these zebras running for freedom. Memers, this is hilarious. This is great. Uh, Shug managed to elude those attempts. Shug will now be transported to Montana to jo join the rest of the Dazzle, or group of zebras. Oh my gosh. So could they be bedazzled? <laughs> oh my gosh. Nine-year-old me wanted a bedazzler so bad. I would have liberacied the ever-living hell out of everything. There is a reason my mom said no, because I would have gone full Dolly Parton. Everything would have been bedazzled. She was probably using wisdom there. But there you go, guys. A little bit shorter of a newsy news, but I did want to get something out to you guys. And I hope you have a lovely evening tonight with your family. Or, you know, if your family isn't too great, then at least a couple of people that, you know, have become your tribe. Anywho, so I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful night. Goodbye.